Hey, this is Brandon, and I am a potter and also a teacher. And I just like to make stuff, so I thought today I'll make a video of my first time trying the new pottery wheel that I got here in the studio. Now you may call it a cheap Chinese pottery wheel, but I prefer the terms budget pottery wheel or value priced pottery wheel. Uh, so we're gonna we're gonna see what it's all about. Uh, first, we'll look at the wheel, uh, check out the build quality, see what the see what it's made of. Uh, then we'll try it out. I'm gonna get some clay on there and see what I can make, and then I'll compare it to a couple other wheels that I have, and I'll give you some final thoughts. Uh, you know, is it is it worth the money? Is it going to work for what I need? I'll tell you the meaning of life. And, no, that's that's like a whole other video. Uh, let's just take a look at the wheel. All right, so this is the biggest wheel that the company Vivor or Vever or Vever, however you say it, biggest biggest wheel that this company makes, and it came comes with a advertised 450 watt motor, which is a little bit bigger. the The rest of the wheels that I looked at on Amazon by this company were advertised as 350 watts, so a little more power, I assume. Uh, the, most of the wheels I saw, they say get up to 300 RPMs, and I wanted the one, the bigger one, because it has a 14-inch wheel head. Uh, it was advertised as a 36-centimeter wheel head, and I thought I, I like the bigger wheel head. It fits my bats a little bit better, things like that. Uh, you, you notice right away it doesn't have any bat pins. It does have kind of a... Well, like a, almost like tree rings going around like there's a little bit of a texture like an old uh, LP record uh, so we got a little texture on there maybe it'll help the clay stick uh, before I forget it also had it also came with the little set of it's like trimming knives which are kind of nice I mean nothing super fancy but I'll give them a shot some of them are very sharp so I'll give those a try, see how they work. Uh, so let's take a look at the rest. I mean, let's check out the, the wheel head. It is actually, it's actually a little short of 14 inches. Actually a little short of 35 centimeters, really. So can I sue them for false advertising? I mean, maybe, I don't know. I'm not worried about it though. Uh, overall, it's probably, Looks like it's a little over 25 inches long. And oh, about 18, a little over 18 inches wide. And one thing you'll notice right away compared to a lot of other wheels is that it's pretty short. It's oh, about almost 13 and a half inches tall, which is once we get it on the floor, I mean, it's gonna look very small, I think, especially compared to my other wheel. Uh, so that's kind of the basic size, pretty solid. Uh, this is all metal. This part here, this is metal, feels like. So pretty solid. I mean, it's not super heavy, but it's heavy enough. I mean, you don't want to haul it around too much. Uh, comes with your standard cord. You got all the main switches here. Open and close for the, as far as the on-off switch it looks like. It does have a forward and reverse switch, which is kind of nice. I don't even know if my old pottery wheel that I've had for 20 years, I don't know if it has that. Uh, I love this button right here, uh, labeled, I don't know if you can see it, it's, it's labeled button. And it's got a little white button with a T in it. Uh, I assume uh, like the breaker switch thing. So if it shorts out and turns it off or whatever. Uh, so there, and it comes with a good size splash pan. I mean, what's wrong with that? In your room, it looks like. Alright, so yeah, it doesn't look too bad there. Uh, the, the pedal, I'm not so sure about the pedal. It's like super lightweight. Uh, it looks like it's all plastic. I'm a little worried. I might squish it, but I mean the plastic is pretty solid, so yeah, it should hold up. Hopefully, it holds up for a while. That's my, that's the main concern. It looks like even the gears inside are made of plastic, 
So you know what, let me take a look. All right, so we've got this unscrewed. So yeah, this is very simple, but the gears are made of plastic, it looks like. Well, the bad news I would think is these could wear out quite easily, quite quickly. Uh, the good news is that probably probably wouldn't cost much to replace. I mean, if I had a 3D printer, you could probably even print these yourself if you wanted to, uh, as far as the gears. And then the electronics, I mean, look very simple to me. I don't know anything about electricity or anything, but it looks pretty simple. So cheap, but if it gets the job done, I think you're, you're going to be all right. So we'll see if the, the plastic actually holds up after, after using it for a while. So let's actually plug it in. We'll make sure at least that it turns on. All right, we'll get it open or oh, on, I assume. Uh, you get the indicator light here. Another indicator light, I guess. Uh, forward, there we go. And it works. I don't know if it's super fast, but we got a reverse, which is actually, I think reverse is the way I'm used to, so maybe that's just a cultural difference. All right, the little T button. Yep, that's uh, switches off the power in case of a short circuit, I guess. Looks like it works fine. We're gonna see, uh, let's take a look underneath. Oh, one thing I've noticed, the these little rubber feet seem to get stuck on the floor. So it feels like it's about a thousand pounds when you start to lift it, but then they get unstuck and, and then it's not too heavy at all. Okay. So here is the underside and Oh, one thing I wanted to say, the, the metal work, I mean, it's not polished, it's not super nice. I mean, it's pretty, pretty rough as far as the welding. I mean, it's pretty, got some sharp edges, got a few burrs here. Uh, so the metal work isn't, I mean, top notch, but what do you expect for, I mean, around 200 bucks? Now, if you look under here, we've got, Got the motor here, pretty simple operation. We got, looks like a rubber belt. Got some grooves on the inside. Uh, pretty simple. I mean, I, if the belt, I mean, wears out, that's pretty easy to replace, it looks like. Power box, and then you get your switches up here. I mean, that looks pretty decent. We'll see if it gets the job done. Let's get this down on the floor and we'll get some clay on it and give it a try. Hey, down here. Ah, oh, that's better. Uh, I just wanted to show you now that the wheel is on the floor, how big the wheel, or I guess how small this wheel is. Uh, what I did is I created a little three-wheeled, I guess, dolly or little cart that I put the wheel on. Uh, for a couple reasons. First of all, to give me a little more height, uh, gives me about four inches more uh, off the floor. So this is a lot closer to where I usually throw at, what height, the height I usually throw at. And also, being on wheels, I can, you know, if somebody comes to throw and they need a wheel, I can roll this out, they can use it. Then I can, if it's just me in the studio making stuff and I need more room, uh, I can just wheel it out of the way and have a little more space. So that's kind of the wheels kind of serve two purposes there. All right, so we have the wheel set up. It is on the caster wheels. Caster wheels are locked, so it doesn't go anywhere. So first thing I notice, just turn it on. It's got a nice, nice control of the speed at low speeds. Which is, which is fantastic. Uh, second thing I noticed as I sat down, 
the the plastic uh, plastic pedal is pretty slippery on my concrete floor, so I might have to get uh, like a little rubber rubber pad or something to put under it, or maybe just attach to the bottom here, because this thing slips around all over the place. At least for me. Oh boy. So that could could cause some problems. Uh, overall, the, I mean, top speed seems pretty decent. I can slow it down a little bit with my hand, but it feels feels pretty good, like it can at least uh, center some clay. So I've got one pound, and then I've got six pounds here we're going to try. Uh, so I could uh, drill some holes for my uh, bat pins if I wanted to. Uh, I could, you know, throw out a slab of clay and attach a bat to that and throw on the bat. Uh, but I'm going to start just throwing right on the wheel head. We'll see how that goes. Yeah, it doesn't feel... When I throw the clay down, it doesn't feel as sturdy, of course, as my, my regular wheel, which is a uh, clay boss. I think the smaller version of the clay boss line. Okay. So first off, it's doing all right. Up. Well, I think I, this is going to be a pound and a half. So we'll say this is a pound and a half, which is, I mean, I throw a real good size mug with Pound and a half, usually about a pound for a mug. Uh, it seems to be centering no problem. I mean, it slows down a little bit with a pound and a half, but I mean, not enough to be worried about it. Now, I got a little clay running down my leg, but I didn't have the splash paint attached all the way. So we've got, I mean, looks like plenty of power to, plenty of power to center pound and a half of clay, two pounds should be no problem, three, I mean no problem at all. You can do a lot of things with a pound and a half of clay, so even if you are, I mean if you're just a beginner, and you're just learning, this wheel seems like it's got enough power to do the basics. I feel like the front uh, space, the little shelf area, is good enough, a decent size, probably about the same as my my bigger wheel, so that's uh, about what I'm used to. So, so far, I mean, no major complaints. I mean, nothing that I can't make an adjustment to and fix. I like that, nice cylinder and a little texture. This will be in a quick demo pot. So just add a little texture just for fun. I feel like the grooves on the wheel head would probably wreck my tools pretty quickly. I'm just going to be real careful with this for now. So I would say pound and a half, no problem. I'm happy with that. Now, I mean, the real test would be a little bit bigger amount. So let's see what we can do. Let's just do it on the wheel head again. See if we can get this centered here. And it's winding a little bit. I don't know if you can hear it. It's not too loud. I mean, probably not the quietest wheel on the market, but 
it's not bad as far as noise levels. So it's definitely slowing down a little bit as I'm centering six pounds of clay. But it's getting the job done. I'm not sure. I never saw a uh, like a maximum capacity how much it could actually center. I never saw that listed anywhere so I don't know I might be able to do 10 pounds. Yeah, I wish the I wish the splash pan is a little little too high for uh, my taste. I feel like I'm pushing down when I, I'm trying to push across, you know, across the wheel head, but I end up pushing more down. It's not as comfortable as I would like. All right, but you probably don't want to watch. I mean, you're, you probably didn't click this video to watch me throw anything. Uh, just test out this wheel. So we'll do a little fast forward and jump right to the end maybe. I mean the the grooves on the wheel head make it a little tougher to cut off so I left a little extra clay down there in case I got a little crazy while I was cutting it off all right so there is a kind of a rough idea of a vase that you can make with this Vivor pottery wheel I mean no no Maybe your struggles. Like I said, it slowed down a little bit as you were centering and pulling up uh, the walls a little bit. But overall, I would say it's not bad. Let's compare the Vivor or the Viver with the other two wheels that I have. Uh, it, it's kind of in between as far as size, smaller than the Clay Boss and bigger than the Artista or Artista, Artista, I don't know how to pronounce any of these things. Um, this one, it was made to be on a table. It's a tabletop wheel. Uh, it's much smaller. The wheel head on this one is only 11 inches. And we said this one is 14, in, almost 14 for this one. And this one I believe is a full 14. Full 14 on the Clay Boss. Um, this one very portable. Very comes in very handy uh, when I go and demonstrate places. I can carry this back and forth really easily. Uh, very nice, very lightweight, uh, easy to lift up and move around. Uh, like I said, it's it's meant for it to sit on the tabletop. Mine sits in this tub on a board. It's kind of elevated from the bottom uh, because I do all my trimming here. I use this one for my trimming. Uh, works perfect. I mean. This one is pretty powerful. I mean, it. I, I believe it's advertised as being able to center 25 pounds. So it's it's strong enough, but it works super well for trimming. Uh, put my Giffen grip on there and just go to town. Uh, it comes with a, it does not come with a pedal. You can actually buy a pedal to attach to it. I believe this one is a little over $500 right now, the time of this video. And the pedal, I believe, is around $100. So we're talking 600 bucks for the wheel and the pedal on this one. This one, of course, a little over 200. And then nowadays, the Clay Boss goes for, I think, around $1,000 for the, the smallest version of the Clay Boss, which I think is a half horsepower motor, which I believe this is. So this one has lasted me, I've, I've had this for 20 years and never had any issues with it. I mean, I, I, it probably needs some little tweaks. I mean, the belt could probably use some adjustment and little things like that, but it works. It works fine. I have never had any, any real issues with it. Uh, so I'm hoping if this one can last, I mean, a quarter of that, I mean, that would be spectacular. Um, so being only $200, I don't expect it to last as long as these two. It's not quite the same build quality, but I mean, sometimes you, you do get what you pay for. If we, can, if we can use this one just for the beginners, you know, throwing smaller stuff, 
it should work out just fine. And one other thing you can you notice, well it's hard to tell from this angle, but this one, the, the clay boss is actually much taller than the $200 Vivor. This one is a little over 16 inches tall and Vivor is about not even 13 inches tall. So that is a big difference. Uh, to be fair, the Artista, the tabletop wheel, I mean from very bottom to the wheel head is about four inches. But the motor is behind it. So it's not underneath. That's why it's so flat. Um, so yeah, there's, there's my three wheels that I have so far. Um, I'm hoping this one can, can serve its purpose. All right, so final thoughts. Uh, overall, I was pleasantly surprised. Pretty solid performance overall, especially for the price. I mean, 200 bucks, and if I can consistently get this, I mean, what more could you ask for? So we'll see though. I mean, this was the first, first day trying it out. Um, there are a few adjustments and concerns. I will definitely be taking the, the pedal and adding some rubber to the bottom or just having a rubber mat that it can rest on so it's not sliding all over the floor. Um, also being all plastic, the pedal, um, I mean, basically its job is to be stomped on. So how long will it last? being all plastic, how long will the gears inside last being plastic. But on the flip side, maybe if something needs to be replaced, it'll be pretty cheap to do so. Another concern might be maybe the motor. I mean, it seems like it's powerful enough, but how long will that last? Coming over from China, I don't know what, what kind of standards they have for electric motors. So hopefully I can get a couple years out of it. So I would be happy to order a couple more uh, I will be ordering at least two or three more of these. That way I can offer some small classes. And if I could get three or four years out of each one, that would give me enough time to save up, you know, some money if I want to get uh, a little bit more expensive set of wheels. Yeah, this should be perfect. Perfect, I would, I would say it's perfect for beginners. Perfect for people who just want to get into it and try it. Or just do it as a hobby, you know, now and then. They want to pull it out every so often and, and throw some stuff. But I don't know how well it would hold up uh, as far as production. I mean, I wouldn't guess that it could keep up, you know, if making pots every day, all day. But I don't know. We'll see. I will, after I get some new, the updated version, I'll order a couple of the updated version and see how those stack up compared to this one. And maybe do another video and give an update on how this one is doing, you know, over the long haul. So yeah, I would say check it out if you're, if you're in the market for a pottery wheel and you can't find a used one and you can't afford a you know, brand new one. I would say take a look at, take a look at this, the Vivor, the Vivor uh, biggest one they can make, 14 inch wheel head or 35 centimeter wheel head. All right, so thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. I will be making some more videos, so be on the lookout for those. Uh, until next time.